rewind the bobbin put your bobbin on the uh, bobbin winder and you'll note that there's a little pin here uh, that uh, is going to go into this little slot and that's to uh, keep the bobbin and make it uh, turn with the bobbin winder put your thread on the spool pin go around this first thread guide down to your bobbin winder tension up to your bobbin and through from the inside out through the little hole in the side there's one in either side so okay uh, in the middle of your hand wheel is a chrome knob which is your uh, clutch release turn your clutch knob a quarter of a turn towards you to release the hand wheel so the hand wheel can turn without making the machine cycle press down on the uh, bomb and winder thingy and um, you'll notice that when you do this little lever over here drops into the uh, center of the bobbin as your bobbin fills it's going to uh, gradually lift this lever until when it's full the uh, bobbin pops up and stops winding so press it down so your bobbin winder tire is in contact with the hand wheel hold the thread you get it started and give it a little bit of gas you don't have to go fast once you get uh, a good start on it you can cut off this little tail over here and then you just hold your uh, presser your uh, foot control and let it wind we're not going to fill a full bobbin because we're just uh, doing a test here you may want to use some other color than white so pop up your uh, bobbin winder and you see it's no longer in contact with the hand wheel. Tighten the clutch knob and now when you uh, turn the hand wheel it makes the machine cycle. With the thread coming off of the bobbin to the right. Insert the bobbin into the bobbin case and there's a little slanted slot here that you want to go into and then under this spring steel leaf spring until it clicks into place. And then you have a little bit of tension on your thread. Uh, let's see. Um, tip your machine back. the easiest way to access the uh, bobbin race because it's right there facing you and on your bobbin winder you'll see there's a little lever here that when you raise it it locks your bobbin in place so your bobbin doesn't fall out slip it onto the spindle of the bobbin race and you'll know when it's locked in place double check to make sure it is uh, it'll kind of click into place too when it goes in and your bobbin is wound to wind the machine I mean to thread the machine uh, put your spool pin spool on the spool pin go under this thread guide and over the top thread guide and down between the convex plates of the uh, upper tension assembly all the way around until you pick up the check spring here so go on around until you can get the check spring now when you pull the thread down it makes the check spring move go under this thread guide here and then through your take up lever all 
I forgot to mention there's a, another big thread guide here. I can just push that into there. Oh, come on. There we go. So it goes under this thread guide, up through this thread guide, and into your take-up lever. Then there's a thread guide on the face plate that you can just slip it in from the side and down to the thread guide on the needle clamp. So now you're threaded except for the needle. And the needle threads from front to back. Cut yourself a nice clean end there so you're not fighting against the little frayed fibers. And poke it right through the needle hole. Make sure you're not accidentally wrapped around the needle or around some other part. Go between the toes of the presser foot and to the back and you're done. Now to bring up the bottom thread, you want to hold your upper thread, turn the hand wheel towards you one full revolution, and it'll bring up the bottom thread. Bottom thread goes under the presser foot and towards the back. Top thread goes between the toes of the presser foot and to the back. Now you're ready to sew. This is your stitch length. All the way up. This is a lock to lock it where you like it. Uh, all the way up is uh, your widest stitch length. As you go down, the stitches get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to zero. When you get to zero, uh, your fabric's not going to move at all and the needle's going to keep going up and down and making stitches until you have a big wad underneath the uh, stitch plate and you won't be able to move your fabric at all. So don't sew with your... Uh, uh, yeah. Don't sew at the zero position. Below zero is reverse. And again, the, uh, as you go down, your stitches get longer and longer and longer in reverse. If you have locked in the stitch length that you're using, like say we're at number two, tighten that down. Now, when you go into reverse, your stitches will be the same length in reverse as they were in forward. Just something to know. But you don't need to lock anything down. You can leave it wide open if you want to. You know, just adjust your thread as you go. Or you can even do cool things and while you're sewing, work the uh, stitch length back and forth to get wider and thicker, wider and shorter and longer stitches. All right. Uh, this is your stitch width adjuster. We'll talk about that later. This is your upper tension assembly. Uh, this is your uh, sewing foot pressure adjuster. But for now, we're just going to leave it at uh, no zigzag. We're going to put the stitch length at oh, about two. That's a good average. And uh, we're going to sew some fairly heavy uh, denim off of a pair of Carhartt work jeans. And uh, you'll notice it's got this nice thick rolled hem at the bottom. Uh, we're going to sew right through that. And uh, another thick hem on this side here. This one's only three or four layers. Yeah, I think at this point it's only two layers. So here we go, lower your presser foot, hold your threads for the first stitch or two to lock it in place, and uh, ease onto the foot control. Oops, give it your, yeah, you are, okay.
Hold your threads for this first couple of stitches to lock the stitch. And ease onto your pressure foot. No hurry. You can hurry if you want, but you don't need to. Here we go up onto that first seam there. Okay, no problem. And, uh, well, hey, you know, I could double that back under and make it three layers. That would be more impressive. Let's do that. There we go. Three layers. Okay, I'm going to avoid this knot for right now. That's like 12 layers, something crazy. Quick. Let me go around that. And over onto this leg seam here. Actually, I guess this is the bottom hem. All right. So she's sewing great and making a nice stitch. Uh, those are kind of short stitches. They might be a little bit hard to see. Um, so let's fold that in half and we'll do uh, two layers on the regular denim and uh, however many layers on that seam down there on that hem. Uh, we're going to add a little stitch length. Um, we'll go to about four. Make some nice long stitches. And up onto that hem. Now we've got can't really count that. That's at least six layers. No problem doing that. Um, this as I said, is your uh, stitch width. That's what makes it zig and zag. So we're going to go to a full stitch width here. And uh, yeah, we'll put the stitch length at around three, just for no particular reason. you can see that uh, it's a medium zigzag kind of wide um, uh, and now we're going to go to a shorter stitch length I'm not going to go down as far as I could I'll tell you why in a minute bit of a shorter one. Um, if you get your uh, zigzag stitches too close together, uh, they can kind of hump up uh, a little bit and it tends to uh, jam up under the uh, presser foot and cause a, uh, uh, well, it causes it to sew in the same spot and make a big knot of thread under the presser foot which you don't want so in your accessory kit you'll find a satin stitch foot that has it looks just like this foot except that it has a uh, a channel underneath for that hump to go through so if you want to make a nice uh, satin stitch which just looks like a wide stripe uh, you'll want to use that other foot uh, okay needle position this is a three position machine and uh, this is, uh, let me go back to straight stitch here. Um, 
as you can see now your needles in the uh, right side of the presser foot and it's going to sew along just like let's move over so we have a, some clean space to show you okay so we're going to sew along on the right side Uh, then I'm going to push this lever in and move up to the center position. Now you can see your needle is centered in that slot. And then, uh, always make sure the needle's out of the fabric when you do this. Press this lever in and go all the way up and your needle is now on the left side. to see the white thread on this light fabric but this uh, seam comes down this way moves over it goes down moves over it goes down so um, all right I'm gonna go back to the center position hold my threads and start it um, let's see what else Tension. If you uh, if you are getting loopy thread on the bottom, uh, it means that you don't have enough upper tension to pull the threads up tight. Uh, so you may need to add a little bit more tension. Uh, also, check to make sure that your uh, your thread is going between the uh, convex plates of the uh, assembly here. Uh, and if you have any issues, that, uh, just check, make sure you don't have crud or something between the plates. But the machine is nice and fresh right now, so I wouldn't expect that to happen anytime soon. Uh, for heavy material, this is your uh, the presser, presser foot pressure. This is the pressure on the presser foot. If you're uh, sewing on a heavier fabric, you may need to screw it down a little bit to get a little more pressure on your fabric uh, if you're sewing something really light uh, you may want to back it off a little bit so you have less pressure on your uh, fabric so the teeth below don't dig in so hard into your uh, material um, That's about it. Uh, you can change the uh, the check spring tension using this lever on the side here. But I'm not a seamstress and I don't know when you would want to do that. Uh, for now, just leave it where it is. Um, I mean, unless it gets moved somehow in the packing and shipping. Uh, but you want it basically in the middle. Uh, belt um, you don't want your belt too tight uh, you want to be able to pinch it at least a half inch or so you want just enough uh, belt tension to operate the machine without it slipping too much uh, if the belt's too tight uh, it'll bog down your machine and make it run slow and you lose power uh, if you do ever need to adjust your belt this screw here uh, back it off and uh, you can move this bracket up or down and that moves your motor closer and further from the uh, groove in the hand wheel which loosens or tightens your belt uh, your power cord uh, is flat on one side here and your uh, the receptacle it pushes into uh, has a flat side on it, so you always know which way to put your uh, 
it plug in. Um, this is your uh, feed drop. Your feed are the uh, teeth of the feed dogs that move the fabric around. And if you want to do darning or uh, uh, machine embroidery or uh, applique or anything like that, where you want to move the fabric instead of uh, having the machine move it in a straight line, you turn this knob a full turn to the left. All right, full turn clockwise anyway. Uh, and back off your sewing foot pressure. Oops, not all that far. Uh, if it pops out, by the way, just push it back down. Um, then you can chicken. We have a chicken in the shop. Go on, chicken. You can't be in here. Hey, scram. Yeah. Most people don't have that problem. Um, best have an embroidery hoop to hold your material flat, uh, especially if it's a lightweight fabric, but uh, this denim should be movable. As I said, I'm, I'm no seamstress, but you know, I, I can move my fabric around and make any design that I want. Again, just don't let it sit in one place and cycle or you'll get a uh, wad of thread under the needle plate. Uh, oh, I know. A fun thing we can do. Um, you want it tight enough that your uh, presser foot comes down with a, an assertive thump. Not a bang, but you know, you want it to come down firmly. Um, and uh, go with the lightest uh, pressure that you can get away with and still move the fabric. Uh, again, as I said, for heavier fabric, you'll probably want a little more. But uh, one thing that you can do while you're sewing, uh, just for fun, is. Um, Pass up. Uh, you can actually move your your zigzag and your stitch length to create different patterns as you sew. And that's how that the machines that have that uh, unit on the back that makes different patterns. That's how it does it. It moves this thing uh, as you sew. So. Uh, machines do it too they just do it in a fancier way and this you can see it right there uh, with a little practice you'll be able to do it more artistically than I do but uh, so that's basically it this is a great machine oh I know I have a little bit of uh, upholstery leather here a nice green color Let's uh, put that under the presser foot. I'm not going to bother to put in a leather needle. A leather needle makes a better hole uh, for a stronger seam. Uh, I think it's got a little wedge, uh, a wedge shape to the needle. Uh, and so the seams uh, tend to be stronger and less likely to tear. But just to show you how it does. Probably want a little bit longer stitch with leather so the holes are a little further apart. This is your uh, upholstery leather. Um, so I get four layers of that. Go to the longest stitch length. So I 
I don't think that you'll have any trouble sewing your upholstery material on this machine. I mean, there's a limit to how much uh, thickness you can get under the presser foot before you trigger the uh, uh, tension release. When you raise your presser foot, it releases the tension, it releases the upper tension so you can pull your fabric out. And if you get your uh, fabric too thick, it's going to lift that presser foot and release the tension. But, um, yeah, it looks like you can get away with quite a bit more width there still. So, I'll leave her uh, threaded up for you. Um, I'll just tie this off and cut it. And you can study that threading path before you uh, take it off. So you've bought one of the best machines available. This is a, a German-made Boff 130, and uh, it's just kind of, I think, the pinnacle of home machines. Uh, it's strong and fast, and uh, yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna sew upholstery, uh, this is the best home machine you're gonna get. Okay, well again, thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's, it's your business that helped us keep doing this. So, uh, we really do appreciate it. Uh, your uh, accessory compartment didn't have a lid, so there's a piece of cardboard in there for now. If you want to cut a piece of eighth inch plywood to fit in there and make a permanent one, knock yourself out. So anyway, again, thank you so much. If you're coming here from somewhere else, uh, we are Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. And our web address is stagecoachroadsewing.com. We're on Stagecoach Road, so it's stagecoachroadsewing, all one word, dot com. Come see us. Uh, you can look at the hundreds and hundreds of machines uh, that we've restored uh, in the last decade or so. We actually lost 10 years of uh, photos in a tragic uh, computer crash. Um, but in the last decade or so, uh, you can see uh, hundreds of machines that we've restored and uh, we take pictures from all sides. So uh, if you want to see what some of the old machines look like, uh, come on by. And there's, uh, there's usually a few really nice machines for sale, uh, fully restored. Uh, for the most part, we have a few less expensive machines that are uh, are just serviced, you know, cleaned and lubed. Uh, uh, but most of them will be fully restored and uh, looking beautiful and ready to come home to your sewing room. So again, Stagecoach Road Sewing, thanks for stopping by. Uh, come see us again.